Hello everyone, Anthony Sequera here with Stormwind's Epic Live. And what we're going to do in this video is take a look at the troubleshooting for network address translation, troubleshooting a very specific case. That case, when we do our show IP NAT translations command to verify network address translation and nothing appears in that NAT translation table. Let's jump right in. Let's review real quickly why network address translation is such a hot topic and exactly how it works. Remember with NAT, we're gonna have typically these RFC 1918 addresses on our inside network. 10.x will be how they're numbered, for instance, or 192.168 or 172.16. These inside RFC 1918 addresses aren't usable on the public internet. We're going to have a router acting in the middle as the network address translation system, and we're going to have that device take that source address and translate it into an address that is usable on the public internet. So that's what's going to happen with network address translation. What we like to do is we like to take many, many different internal RFC 1918 addresses and translate them to one single external publicly usable address. And this is of course called port address translation or PAT. So this works just great and it helps to uh, solve the IPv4 address shortage that we're faced with. But what happens when things go wrong? Specifically, what happens if we have a translation that we expect to occur that is not occurring in the translation table? If we go to our NAT router from that particular illustration we showed you and we do the command show IP NAT translations and we don't see a translation entry, how should we troubleshoot that? Well, let's walk through the steps. The very first thing Cisco tells us, and what a great idea, make sure you don't have access control lists in place that are denying the inside devices from reaching that network address translation system. How we can do that at the command line is we can just go ahead and do show IP interface, and then we can go to the interface that is facing the inside devices, and we can check for an access control list. Notice we have outgoing access list is not set, inbound access list is not set, so obviously we don't have any access control list, you know, preventing the traffic from coming in. Notice again, this command that we utilized was show IP interface. Show IP interface is so critical with access lists because you can see that an access list is on your device with show access lists, but you can't see whether or not it's referenced under an interface or not without this particular command. Obviously, you could do a show run interface and look at the running config under the interface for the show IP, uh, or you would uh, see the IP access hyphen group command but again, we love show IP interface to show us the existence of filters either inbound or outbound. Okay, so there's no ACL blocking the traffic that's trying to come in and get translated. What else might the problem be? Well, how about the access control list referenced by the NAT command? Is it identifying properly the traffic that we want to translate. So here we are on the NAT device. Let's go ahead and utilize our show access list command. And let's take a look at the access control list. There's an access control list called AL underscore NAT source 
and we can see that it is going to highlight, and we even got a match for it, by the way, that's a good sign. It's going to highlight or classify any traffic that has 10 in the first octet. Well, that should definitely get our inside host addresses. If we do a show IP interface brief, we see that yes, indeed, our inside address is the 10.x space. If I do a show run include NAT, we can correlate the access control list named AL underscore NAT source with the what I call NAT instructions. IP NAT, take the source from an access control list called AL NAT source and translate it into the what we call the inside global address of fast ethernet zero slash one and we're gonna overload it. We're gonna do that port address translation. So we can see there's a correlation on that access list. This all looks great. We don't have a problem with the access control list that is set up to specify exactly who will translate. What's our next step? Are there enough addresses in the NAT pool? Well, we're doing port address translation here, so we would only run out of addresses if we ran out of port numbers, and that's definitely not going to happen. We'll typically never get beyond 400 or so hosts on a particular segment, so that's not going to be the issue here. So what we need to do is look at our fourth and final troubleshooting step for this particular predicament, and that is... Are our router interfaces appropriately defined as NAT inside and NAT outside? And that is such an easy step to forget. As a matter of fact, when we did the show run include NAT, ooh, I was a little bit troubled by the fact that we only got our NAT instructions. We did not get the IP NAT inside command reported to us. We didn't get the IP NAT outside command reported to us. And those are going to be a necessary configuration ingredient here. So let's go ahead and do that. It looks like that's our problem. For the inside interface, we need to say IP NAT inside. For the outside interface, we need to say IP NAT outside. Notice the delay. Did you check? Did you see that delay there? That's literally the router getting itself set up to do NAT. Let's go to the outside interface and do IP NAT outside. And now we should be good. I think we've found the problem. Let's go ahead now and go to our host system and we will ping the web server that's out there. We get a response from the web server. We're pinging from an inside host named Host A out to this fictional web server that we've set up. I guess it's not fictional, it's just that it's not actually a web server. And now let's go ahead and take a look at the NAT device, show IP NAT translations and look at this now we do indeed have a NAT translation in the table and sure enough network address translation is working beautifully we can see that we have our inside global address of 215.15.2 with the port number of one being utilized we can see this translates an inside local of 10.0.0.1 colon 1. We can see the outside local address is 215.15.100 colon 1. That's the address we've got on that outside interface. And you can see the outside global that we communicated with. So, it worked great. Once we went through that troubleshooting methodology that Cisco recommends, once again, for review purposes, that was nothing blocked the traffic coming into the NATing router. 
the ACL was properly structured for telling exactly the router what to translate, there were indeed en enough addresses in the NAT pool, and finally, we had our NAT inside and outside commands. That's an easy step to forget, and that's exactly what we forgot in this particular network address translation example. Well, I hope you've enjoyed this video on troubleshooting NAT. We'll do lots more of these because unfortunately, by the nature of our discipline, there are so many things that we might have to troubleshoot with our Cisco networking. So we'll be back with plenty of more videos for you on a structured approach to troubleshooting network problems. Thanks again for joining us, everyone, and we hope to see you soon in one of our Stormwind Live training classes.